<laughs> okay. Okay. I see. Good night. Okay, that's an <laughs> Jesus. <laughs>I hope you guys are up for some chaos because today we're going to talk about a fairly chaotic build. Now in the next days I'm going to have a lot more reasonable, simple, straightforward beginner builds. But this one I really wanted to talk about before launch because I think it's super hilarious and super fun to play. And I yeah didn't know when else to fit it in so we're going to talk about it now. So the two weapons again, sword and great axe here. And we're going to start with the Great Axe, because that part is actually somewhat simple. So, with the Great Axe, you're going to go Reaper. You're really just going to go Reaper. You're not going to do the typical Gravity Well thing. Instead, your three skills are going to be Reap, Charge, and Execute. And after that, there's a lot of flexibility. Like, the exact point distribution here is, is not that set in stone. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get Greed because I want to have extra damage on that. Uh, I'm going to get the Collector because I want the Reap range. I want to have the Hunger. I want to have the extra Swing here with Fatal Attraction. So I don't need to go into too much detail about all of these because I don't even know if they're going to be the exact same on life. I'm pretty sure the abilities are going to be the same on life client though. If you want to look into these in between, you can. But basically, increases range, gives you a little bit of healing, and it gives you a second swing on the attack of the weapon. I also really like the improvements that you can get for charge, which increases the damage and gives you a cancelable swing with a wider width. So I think that's pretty great. And then after that, yeah, you, you again flexible. Like for example, you can increase your critical damage. It may not even be that worth it to be honest. The more I think about it, but I like uh, extra damage against uh, targets with high health, for example. So uh, you can have one of these healing things. You can have the block counter. Uh, higher crit chance, critical condition, this one especially I think is interesting. Or you could go into the points for uh, execute here as well, you get uh, unstoppable greed, uh, which gives you grit, and then you could have a 100% crit chance against low health targets. But we won't need that. In fact, you can get unstoppable greed, because it's like not necessarily something, like for, for some niche situations you may still want to use it. But I don't think it's worth getting Executioner. Now we're gonna get Bloodless here, of course. Super strong perk uh, that gives you more mobility and more damage when looking at a target. Uh, that's what makes the Great Axe so scary. We're also gonna get uh, Heavy Pull, because Heavy Attacks pulling the enemies closer is pretty nice. And I also like Enduring Strikes for the Grit on the Heavy Attacks, even though you don't use them that often. Now, at this point, your points are just very flexible. Again, you can go down this path, you can go... Uh, Maybe get frustration, you can maybe get some of the uh, life leeching attacks, you can get like critical gains and then you can get uh, the keen edge along with that and then you can get feed so you have a bunch of crit chance, crit damage, healing stuff. It's it's not that important. I guess we can uh, have the critical at, against low health targets as well but it might not even be important either. So again very flexible, you can instead also say hey I want to go down here, I want to uh, get some bonus damage for blocking and uh, Maybe, maybe some damage absorption, I don't know. Not that many points even worth investing into at this point, unfortunately. Like, you're kind of going to run out of some things to to use. But the most important things here, right? For sure, are Reap, Charge, Execute, uh, Fatal Attraction, in my opinion, is pretty important, uh, and Bloodlust. And everything else surrounding that is just uh, fluff to, to fill out the rest of the points, and then at the end it, it really gets very flexible. And because you're not going into gravity well, you don't have this, the typical awkward point path thing, so you really end up with too many points. So yeah, let's just put it into unstoppable greed, you won't need that all that much to be honest though. Because that's what we have our sword and shield for. We have to go over here, and what we're going to do here is we're actually not going to go willing blade or shield rush at all. We're going to skip both of them, that's an interesting start. So we actually want to go deep into both trees. And this is a PvP build, so to make that clear, it works in PvE as well, but you don't, you're don't you not actually going to go ahead and tank with this most of the time. You can, ironically, but it's not the purpose of the build. Now, 
the first one here is uh, basically up to you already. Uh, the final hit in your light chain doesn't really matter because it never happens. And uh, the empowered stab also rarely happens because you're not going to use that many heavies. I think we're going to go with the heavies here. Um, and then here we get our strike, critical strike chance. Crit is not even that good. So the first skill that we're going to use here is leaping strike. I think leaping strike is insanely strong. Um, I think we can get the, the upgrades here as well potentially, but they aren't necessarily that good for us. Um, but leaping strike we want because this is the only mobility ability that you have. Uh, shield rush range is so short that it doesn't really count as mobility in my opinion and it kind of slows you down anyways and i really love leaping strike since it's buff now you could also go reverse step because reverse step has a, a really cool perk at the end which is tactician and that reduces all sword cooldowns but the problem is that reverse step is much harder to land in pvp specifically in order to land it you either have to wait for the enemy to make a mistake or you will have to CC them yourself. And since your only CC is Shield Bash, uh, that's not going to be a good idea. We'll get to that in a bit. So, what are we going to do here? We're going to get Leaving Strike. In my opinion, most of the time, this will be the better choice. Uh, we also want to pick up Mobility. Moving faster while blocking, I think, is very, very important with this build uh, for PvP specifically. And you can get this. You can get like a little bit of an Empower for blocking, but it's not really that worth it. And... Uh, yeah, there's some other perks that you can like look into. So it depends a little bit. Like this, for example, becomes beneficial if you uh, pick up uh, the upgrades here, the cowardly punishment. Uh, but that, that requires you to hit an enemy in the back, which is not always a given. Most enemies in New World are turned towards you. So I think those abilities that hit enemies in the back are generally not that great. But maybe by launch this will be changed anyway. So who knows what, what will happen to it. But then we look at the defender tree. Here... Uh, you kind of want both of these actually, but we're going to get Sturdy Grip here primarily because uh, I think having that extra block is very nice. Now we're really getting into the, the meat of it. We want to get Shield Bash. We want to get Shield Bash upgrade 1 and now you can kind of go wherever. But the other thing that we want to get, obviously we want to get the abilities a little bit earlier. This is not something you can do when you don't have any points in your sword yet. Like this is something you respec into when you have a few points. And the other thing we're going to get is Defiant Stance. Now, this, this may get me some weird looks, because this is, like, not what you would normally suggest in PvP. But here is my hot take on that. Basically, these three abilities are almost entirely useless in PvP. Unless you use Reverse Stab in combination with Shield Bash. Then, then Reverse Stab is very good. But we're not doing that. We are using the Shield Bash for something else. So, we don't need this. Willing Blade, not a very strong ability, not a very useful ability, uh, in my opinion, for PvP. It's nice that it applies Rend a little bit, uh, so that could be useful. But overall, not, not really uh, the most effective ability. If you're fighting multiple enemies, then you could work with a Tactical Strike. Because then you get a cool reduction for the ability itself, and that's kind of decent, I would say. But... I want to fight 1v1s with this. That's that's the whole purpose of this build. You have to like do the, the hard 1v1s. And even if you're fighting two enemies, you pretend it's a 1v1 and you ignore the second one for the most part. And, and with that, per, for that purpose, Defiant Stance is great as well because you just reduce all damage taken. So, the funny thing is, if you look at this, the, like with these two skills, you can technically tank dungeon, dungeons even. It's not what you're meant to do with this build, but it actually works. And uh, after that, you want to get, you know... Uh, Especially this perk, this is super important, Invigorating Bulwark, giving you extra stamina uh, when you use a, a Shield Bash or Shield Rush, because in PvP that extra stamina, in my opinion, is very, very, very valuable. And then you would get Concussive Bash, which gives you that one extra stun, one second extra stun duration. And you need that. So, at this point, we have what we need in order to make our build work. Uh, everything after this is is a bonus. So we can, for example, get uh, some some more damage reduction here uh, on Defiant Stance. We can get some health back at the end. That's nice. Um, for PvE, uh, yeah, for any, any sort of fighting scenario with groups, you can get Recuperation if you want to. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Uh, you can get some extra uh, cooldown reduction, one with a shield. And uh, you can also get uh, High Grip if you want to fight ranged enemies, which I think is good. Um, you can get 
both of the resistances here, the, the armor and the resistance. Uh, defensive training, also fantastic. Actually, you might want to get that earlier because Fortify is just a very nice perk to have. Uh, this one is not going to be relevant for us for PvP specifically, so you can technically skip that. And you can, again, you can get defensive formation. You're basically a, a tank in many ways, but it's not going to matter in a 1v1 because it doesn't apply to yourself. So really, these are the, the skills that you need and everything else after that is just fluff. So let's just uh, decide that we are going to get the debuff cleanse maybe and, and then we're good. Doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is, this is what we want. The, the important perks here really are the shield bash and the upgrade shield bash. Uh, the the Karkasov Bash, it's called, uh, as well as the Leaping Strike and the Defined Stance. So how does this play out? You fight and have two great ways to close distance. You have Leaping Strike, which was buffed and is very fast now. And you have the Charge, which is an excellent engage tool. So enemies uh, will have a relatively hard time creating distance to you. That is what you're trying to abuse. You can use the Reap to close the distance again if they uh, try to dash away or anything, roll away. And with that, you should be able to, to close the distance most of the time. If you don't, if you have to tank something up uh, while you're being attacked, like if they have a lot of range damage, you go into your Defiant Stance. If you're fighting a melee enemy, you're using your Defiant Stance and you just reduce any damage that you would take. And why do you do that? Because your main goal is to get the shield bash on the enemy. And this is the one that you cannot mess up. With this build, you have to be very careful. Do not use shield bash in a situation where the enemy can dodge away from you or can block the attack. Because if they can, if they have any option to do that, that kind of takes away a lot of the potential. It's still a strong build without it because you still have all the great X perk, you still have uh, Bloodlust, you still have Reap, you still have... The sword, which is also an, a weapon with excellent tracking, and you can still box for a very long time. But you want to get the shield bash off because it's your biggest damage spike every time. So first of all, you have the increased damage from this, so the shield bash actually does okay damage. Even though, as far as I understand it, it scales off your shield, so usually the damage is not that high anyways. But then, you stun them with that 3 second duration, and what you do is you walk behind them. And after you walk behind them... You see, execute. And that is why you don't even need the crit chance here. Because you go behind the enemy, so you have a guaranteed crit chance. You can't stack, backstab, and crit, from what I've found so far. And I've heard people claim that you can, but every test I ran so far uh, against any of the uh, test dummies did not confirm that you can stack them. So I'm pretty sure you can only crit or backstab. So if you walk behind the enemy, you don't need crit chance, and you're gonna deal... 200% weapon damage at least, if not 300% weapon damage. That's why you don't really need the grid either, because technically, usually the enemy should be CC'd, but there is the odd situation where that's maybe not the case. And as you can see, the Execute has a 25 second cooldown, and the Sword Stun also has a 25 second cooldown. The Sword has a few reduction effects, so uh, we might get that a little bit lower, but effectively, the idea remains the same. And what you can also do if you haven't used your Defiant Stance yet, is after you do this combo once, which you can do relatively early, you pop your Defiant Stance. And then your goal is basically just to survive until you can use the Shield Bash again. And the insane amount of damage that you can get out of two executes, at least hypothetically, in a single fight, that are guaranteed backstabs, might just be enough to, to kill an enemy. Like, it might just be enough damage without even using, like, more than, like, three other basic attacks in between it, though. So, this is a very cheesy build, uh, but it's actually an interesting build at the same time. It's something you can use to tank a dungeon as well. Just get a, a secondary, like, a Warhammer as a second tank weapon, and, and you'll be fine. You're just missing the reverse stab reset, but that's okay. Again, not that important. Our, the, our important perks here uh, are all covered. And the Great X plays pretty much like it always does. The only difference is that you don't have access to gravity well. And instead you have Execute, which is a super slow ability and is normally not worth using in PvP situations at all, in my opinion, because it's just too telegraphed and too avoidable. But when the enemy is just stunned and has no way to avoid it, then that's a different story. And the problem with stuns in New World is that they're not really stuns, they're mezzes. They break the moment you deal damage. 
So you want to bring put out the maximum damage with a single ability that you can in order to yeah just maximize the potential of this. And that is where the execute comes in. Like if you look at reverse stab, that still has decent damage, but that's still just 175% of a source damage. Whereas the great axe is looking at 200% of a great axe's damage, which is usually a bit higher. So it's a very spicy build, it's a very meme fun build. I'm hoping that I can put a clip of it at the end. I used basically the same concept. I, I didn't switch over to Defiant Stance yet at the time, which I would recommend, which I think is much better. I think I still had the reverse stab. Uh, not much of a point in using that, and you even get health back with uh, Defiant Stance, which is a nice bonus to just a little bit of a heal in the middle of the fight that can throw the enemy off a little bit. Yeah, just a build I really wanted to talk about because I thought it was really fun, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to learn more about more serious, less meme builds, then please consider subscribing and clicking the bell, because I will have an actual Sword and Shield guide that goes over a standard build soon as well. With that, thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.